Hey, Al. Crash. What's up, man? Glad to be back, amigo. Glad to be back. Short hiatus. Hey, before we get started, did you hear, did you hear about Danny? It's just popped up. Danny? Delco Danny. No. He Delco. made... Yeah, Delco Danny. He made a deal with a dealer that he met at the Rivers Casino. What the hell are you talking about? You don't remember Delco Danny. No, I don't remember Delco Danny. He got caught counting cards and the spades broke his heart. <laughs> Why do you do this to me? And then the, point breeze, to me? then the Point Breeze boys broke his nose. What, I don't know what, about what this Maddie? is. What is it? Did I don't you hear know Maddie, Maddie either. I didn't hear Maddie. She finally got that job that she wanted out of town. What is this? She was she was better than the sum of all of us anyhow. Um, I can't believe you don't remember Delco Danny. Anyway, let's get into the show. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Starting off with the show. Alvin. Yeah, crab pot. Pumped. Welcome to another episode the of that seat, mortgage baby. show. It is August 2nd. Big week behind us, perhaps the biggest week all year as far as mortgage rates go. Um, What's it all mean? Where are we going, Al? What do you say, kid? I don't know. We're out here swinging and ducking, pal. Swinging and ducking. Summer's winding down. O's are hot, right? Love that. Um, Slowly easing towards football season, which everybody gets excited Mm. about. Nice crisp fall weather coming up. Um, not to mention our business looks like it's going to be uh, picking up steam here in the next couple of months. And we're going to get into that a little bit later in the show. So a lot of good stuff happening. Here. A lot of good stuff. Yep. A lot of good stuff. So we'll get right into it. First segment. What's your rate? All right. What's your rate? This week we had a big week for rates. Like we said, this week we had the Federal Reserve meeting. The Fed meets throughout the year to discuss monetary policy, manipulate their federal funds rate. Um, they met Wednesday and, uh, they did not move the rate for the ninth consecutive meeting, which was expected. However, we did see, uh, big moves in the 10 year treasury bond. So, um, why don't we hop over there? Cause that's a live, it's a live, uh, mm. it's a live moving target. So why don't we check in and see, get a live look here, live Let's look at nine thirty two. Can you sit on your screen now? I can. What is that? Nine thirty nine thirty two AM we're looking at three point eight five seven, which to break below the four threshold I think is a pretty big deal. Um, we saw it pushing up toward five just recently, which drove rates toward eight. What do you think, Alvin? Um, yeah, I think this is fantastic news, that's what I think. I think that uh yeah, last year we were pushing, or actually no, a couple months ago, right? We were pushing up towards five, almost got there, 4.9 and change. Yeah. And now here we are under four. And, you know, what's that mean for rates? That's the exciting part. It means rates are coming down, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's very exciting stuff. That is the exciting very part. Very exciting stuff. Very exciting. Yep. So, um, what what is it what does it mean for rates? You know, where are rates now? So we'll jump we'll do one more screen share here. Let me get screen share. Screen share. Here we go. Big screen share day. <laughs> Big screen share guy. All right, Boom. Alvin. Take us through yeah. it. Yeah, so this is what we're looking at. Convention that's that conventional rate right there, that's six point seven three. That's without any kind of lender adjustments or overlays. Um, low level price adjustments, anything like that. Um so conventional loan, that's where you're looking. If we were talking a couple of months ago, we would have been looking, I'd say, in about the low to mid sevens right there. Um, mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, here we are now. You see it down at 6.73. Keep trending down. And then for a government loan, which is going to be your FHA loans and your VA loans, you can expect that rate to be down in, you know, low sixes, high fives. High five. High, f- high yeah. five. <laughs> I can't wait to start pitching high fives to people. Come on, let's get a high five going. What do you say? Pitch high five. Big high five, guys. Might have to change the name of the show to mm-hmm. high five, guys. We'll talk about it. Um, high five, yeah, guys. Burgers down, and fries. Really positive. Really super duper positive. Um, 
it's all good stuff. I mean, it, we're a little lighthearted and for good reasons. A lot of positivity in the bond market. The mortgage world mm -hmm. um, is, is, is getting a little bit life back in it, you know? We're getting a heartbeat again. And rates continue to fall. Hopefully, it incentivizes buyers to get back in the market, get things moving and shaking. Maybe even incentivize sellers, those golden mm. handcuff folks, to list their houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, breathe a little life into this thing, right? We need to breathe a little life into it. It's a key point there, you know. Um, you have all the buyers in the world, tons of pre-approvals, but doesn't it's not worth a hill of beans, Ab? Not a hill of beans if there's no uh, nobody looking to sell. And then we got problems. So uh, yeah, right, exactly. If there's no houses on the market, it's just not. That's the maybe the biggest point here and uh and i think that's a good spot to wrap up our rates segment so rates are down spirits are high al mm -hmm. take us into Very the high. take take us into the next segment there brother yeah next segment uh new segment brought to you by mamitas mamitas our seltzer is mucho delicioso mucho mucho mm -hmm. <laughs> so this next <laughs> so this next segment uh, to be known and referred to as the super awesome, wild, terrific market update. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So we're a little more broad, a little more broad spectrum here. We want to just give a total market update. Maybe stretch ourselves out a little bit. Get out of the mortgage world and. Hey, maybe we might even put our foot in our mouths. You know, we're human here, so bear with us. But we have yeah. on the market update, the super terrific, awesome, excellent market update. We have mortgage applications, housing inventory and pricing data, job support. And lastly, how's going to cover for us the price of tea in China? Al, mm -hmm. what's going on in housing? Yeah, so uh, let's talk housing. U.S. house prices. Uh, remained unchanged according to the FHFA house price index. So sitting at about 5.7% 5, 5 increase over the last year. Uh, month to month, prices are going to change by region, right? Some places, some places are going to be a little hotter. Some places are going to be a little colder. But year over year, prices continue to be positive across all areas. So. Mm. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, prices continue to go up, like you just said, and people have been waiting for housing to crash. I mean, people are yeah. waiting for housing bubble to pop, and uh, they've been waiting for years. So the question mm -hmm. is, you know, how long do you wait, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's a great point. I mean, I, honestly, um, I at one point was one of those people I didn't think that values – could keep going up if rates were going up like they were, you know, especially being as low as they were. Um, I thought that something had to give, but lo and behold, um, values pushed to their highest ever and rates got to what the highest they've been in about almost 25 years. So, you know, all while inflation has been through the roof, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, that's why we always say, you know, it's like, it's like that old Chinese proverb, right? When's the best time to buy a house? 20 years ago. I'm not, a, I'm sorry. When's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. Not a tree guy, right? When's the best time to buy a house? Yesterday. Second best time right now. So I think I missed the mark on that one, but you get the point. Let's buy now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you swung, you swung for the fences of the Chinese proverb. Uh -huh. just, Wait, it is a Chinese know? proverb. Yeah. Nobody even knows what a proverb is. So we're going to move on gracefully, yeah, I if I close. might add. I was close. All right. Well, let's see here. You know, if you can buy, you buy now. But let's talk about inventory. Inventory is still low. It's trending mm -hmm. in the right direction. I do believe it feels that yeah. way. Uh, let's look at some data. You know, well, what what do, what am I going to do here? A little bit of a screen share for you, pal. Let's get into the screen share. Why don't we? All right. <coughs> so you got my screen. Just do this whole thing like a Marvel movie in front of a green screen. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. I couldn't figure out how to do the green screen. But anyway, here we go. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Florida housing market overview. We're going to go in Florida first because that's where I am. And I am the most important person Naturally. In the sh right now. All right. Naturally. Okay. So, all right. So median home price in Florida, uh, the whole state, uh, 419, 200. That's up 2% year over year. Number mm -hmm. of homes sold 32, about 33,000. And that's down. 14% year over year. Median days on market, which is maybe the most topical and relevant number. We're looking at 57 yeah. in Florida, which is up 16 days year over year. So things are sitting 
a little bit longer here in Florida. And I will say Florida, talking inventory, has more inventory than most places. Um, yeah, a ton of people inventory. Are, people are coming and going from Florida a little bit more. There's a lot of new construction. So yeah. Um, why don't we check out Baltimore? Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore, Maryland, pretty specific um, market, but uh, let's check it out. So we've got, you know what, Al? You're in Baltimore. You're the Baltimore guy. Why don't you read Baltimore for me? I'm Baltimore guy. Uh, yeah, so median uh, sales price a little bit lower than down there in Florida. Um, mm -hmm. 240000 still up 4.3% year over year. Um, only 710 homes sold down 20 percent that can't be right can it that's crazy i guess it's just in baltimore that's wild um yeah should we look at maryland median, as a whole huh finish this out and we'll go to, to maryland as a whole yeah, yeah, yeah median days on market 36 so things are moving still right um you know which for a seller is good if you're a buyer and you see things that are sitting a little bit longer you got a little wiggle room right you can negotiate mm -hmm. a little bit so <clears throat> All right, so let's go over real quick, real quick to Maryland, just Maryland as a whole, and let's see what that is. And Al, take it away, man. You crushed it. So go over Maryland. There we go. That's a little different. Yeah, and that's a little bit better. Now we're talking four fifty two nine. We were count. You know, we, we weren't getting the good counties here. Um, four fifty two nine. That's 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 median sales price. That's high. That's up there. Um, For sure. Up what four point six percent over the last year, year over year. So again, with rates being as high as they are, values are still going up. Um, and uh, homes sold down uh, about eight percent. Or I'm sorry, almost nine percent. Sixty three hundred homes sold, still not terrible. And then days on market. I mean, these bad boys are selling like hotcakes. Can't keep them on the shelves. Right. Mm -hmm. Very um, hot. Yeah. Pop very market, little, so. very little leverage, leverage for those buyers. Lastly, um, so yeah, in Maryland and, and real quick. So in Maryland, uh, where we do a lot of our work, we, we definitely see multiple offer situations. We see people trying mm -hmm. for two, three houses before they get one. So, uh, again, it's only going to get worse as rates come down because more people are getting the market. Um, if we're already at 23 days, it's going to get a lot worse once more houses or I'm sorry, once more people get into the market. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, these things are going to fly. And the only reason, I mean, I guess it's a 23 days is because of how long, you know, the process takes, but it's right. going to be, it's going to be a lot of turnover. Well, days on market goes from under con under uh, listed to of course under contract. It does. So let's jump into here real quick. Port St. Lucie, the little, little town I call home here in Florida, median sale price 416 home sold down 20%. So not much action going on there. And here, median days on market, 81 days. That's up 25 days year over year. So buyers in the Port St. Lucie market, um, maybe it's time to get in there. You got you got lower rates than you had and mm -hmm. you got houses sitting, which means you got some leverage to negotiate, maybe get some seller concessions, maybe mm -hmm. get some uh, price reductions. Throw in the furniture and the dog too, right? You can yep. get anything you want in that market. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if people are giving away their dog. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Let's not speak um, for people. Yeah, you're right. We shouldn't We shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, Alvin. This is, yeah. this is, so uh, why don't you – you got anything to say about the inventory? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I do. I okay, really good. do. You good. know, with this rise in inventory, um, more homes go under contract according to the National Association of Realtors. Pending home sales increased 4.8%, um, right? But still remains down from where it was last year. So I think it's yeah. going to turn. It's going to turn, and I'm, I'm curious to see what the next few months will bring. If rates mm -hmm. go down or continue to go down like we think and hope they will, uh, will people list their houses? Or are they hanging on to those 2% interest rates for dear life? That's the yeah. – that's the, that's the theme of the show here is like inventory is going to follow the rates. Is it? And it's all about those sellers and people that have those low interest rates. Yeah. I'm kind of curious to find out what that threshold is, right? What is mm -hmm. that threshold that entices somebody that's at 
a rate in the twos or the low threes to finally pull the trigger, right, and and sell their house and, and buy another house. I'm really curious to find out what that looks like. But I and, think obviously it's going to be an overtime thing where you're seeing it happen more and more until it's just – it's going to like snowball basically. So. Right. Okay, good point. Well, uh, time will tell. And um, next, yeah. last – Last, I guess not last, but second to last data point that we're going to get into is mortgage applications. So um, rates have been kind of trickling down over the last couple of weeks. This week was big, but uh, up until this point, most recent data we have, rates are not affecting mortgage applications. They're not impressed. People must not be impressed yet. Mortgage applications last week uh, fell by 3.9%. To the sharp, it was the sharpest weekly decline in mortgage demand in nearly two months. So yeah. we'll we'll see next week when the when you know things kind of catch up to the rates. I think you're going to see. I think that's going to either level out or or go up a touch because I mean rates have come down even more this week, right? This is this is, we're in a really good spot, and I think you're going to see applications react to that. You know, I think I mean? we're going to see like a jump of t- like twenty percent next yeah. next time we have this reading. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what, two weeks, by the time we do our next show, I wouldn't be surprised if that jumped about 20% if the market holds where it is, right? Hold. Not, no. Hold. And not just from the people that are buying, right? But you have all these people that are just treading water with, with, you know, the debt, consumer debt is the highest it's ever been, right? So credit card balances are up there. You know, people are getting to a point they're treading water. It's like, okay, well, rates are coming down. Let's take a look and see if this can help me, right? If I can pay off some bills or, you know, lower my interest rate or whatever the case may be. So I think that, you know, we're going to see that change pretty significantly. Yep. Uh, last, last data point, last, last uh, piece of data here that we're going to talk about is the jobs report came out this morning. Um, you almost feel like the federal reserve kind of knew what was coming with their meeting Wednesday and there's the momentum over the last couple of days. But this morning, the jobs uh, report came out in the U S added fewer jobs than expected, 114,000 jobs. Unemployment jumped and hiring has slowed for the third straight month. This is exactly what the Federal Reserve has been pointing to and looking for as a sign of slowing inflation. Um, Stock market this morning is not reacting great to the data. Uh, Stock stock market's pretty much down across the board. Um, You know, it's bittersweet because we want inflation to cool, but that comes with a you know less than perfect economy but it's kind of what we need to get over this hump this inflation hump and mar- and interest rate uh, hump yeah yeah got any thoughts there alvin yeah i don't want to necessarily root against america but or root against our economy but i definitely you know let's just settle down a little bit let's get these rates manageable i need to feed my family mm-hmm. Right, we need to beat our families. So, as far as the whole jobs thing goes, yeah, I don't really know what that does. Here's what I do know: it impacts the ten-year Treasury bill, and that's what right. I focus on. I can't, I can't speak to anything else because I don't know anything else. I'll probably sound like an idiot. Um, so, T bills down. Al's happy because that means rates are going down. That's where we are. I'm sorry I don't do uh, green screens and graphs. Is that a shot? At your fucking co-host in the live, it was not. It was, not, it was an unintentional shot that just if rolled you off haven't, the tongue. I guess there's some pent up things that I wanted to say. We haven't we haven't done a show in about a month, and I got some things that I want to get off my chest. So, and the the things that you want to get off your chest is that you don't have green scenes and charts. That's well, just the tip of the iceberg, buddy. Let's just uh, see where it goes. Um. So yeah, that's where they are. But uh, let's talk about the wonderfully named Price of Tea in China. <laughs> Another great little segment we're going to do. Let's just talk real quick about what inflation has done to grocery prices. Um, so <clears throat> grocery prices have increased um, about 25.8% since November of 2020 when food inflation was um, – about 3.9 percent so that means that basket of groceries that cost a hundred dollars in 2020 would be about 125 dollars and 80 cents in 2024 so um, dude and i think that's a little low i think it's more you know um 
but some of the fastest rising prices were, you know, meat, poultry, fish, and eggs, right? Which, why not? They're some of the most healthy things, some of the things that we need the most, right, for a healthy diet. So, it's yeah, pretty. Ex- it's it's pretty excruciating. It is pretty mm-hmm. excruciating. You go out to eat. You go out to the to the uh, grocery store. You f- it's it's freaking rough. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's the price of everything. Because- yeah, yeah, it's tough. Um, God, you go to a you go on a Costco trip to feed your family, and it is oh, oof, it's big. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's 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 a couple hundred dollars big. So. Not to mention that you're you're getting food from the grocery store that is mass produced, and not to get too conspiracy theory like, but it just doesn't have to be this way. I talk to a lot of like uh, farmers and stuff around here, and mm. um, and you know I asked one of them who's a really sharp guy, great guy, um, Uncle Swab. Shout out to my man. He's great, mm. but I would talk. I talked to him. We had a podcast together, and I was like, "He has this idea of 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 you know supporting communities in the community. It's like we don't yeah. need to get we don't need to get our freaking meat from other states, other countries. We don't need to get our eggs and our produce from other countries. We can focus on like zip codes and have sustainable regenerative farms in zip codes where people do things right." Like it doesn't have to be this way. It's a real shame, but that's a whole different. Yeah, topic. no, I, I 100% agree, and that's why I think most people love going to like um, going to the farmers market, right, to get their groceries mm-hmm. for the week, right? Hit a farmers market on a Saturday or a Sunday. Or go to the Amish market, which I love the Amish market, but um, you know, go somewhere where you can get food that's you know locally or somewhat locally sourced, you know. So. Yeah. Those Amish, they're that's they're. What are the Amish up to? You know, what are they doing? Just out there building a bunch up of barns, something. building barns and rocking chairs. That's it. That's it. That's all they're doing. They're building barns, building, the, building the, very the, stable the, furniture, heavy stable furniture, well built. Heavy so. stable furniture, and they're and they're and they dress like, you know, the 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 settlers. If, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's a very buggies. pure, it's a more, more people. It's such are an exciting back. thing when you see them, when you know what I mean? When you're driving in Lancaster, Pennsylvania and you drive by, you're like, Oh my God, you know, there they are. And they're in their horse and buggy and they're just getting it with their little, you know, the orange triangle on the back, the caution triangle. And they're just, you know, riding into town, getting God knows what, you know, and then we cruise by in our car, blasting our music, holding our phone. <laughs> it's on, it's on. Believable. I <laughs> completely different. I actually have been in one of those buggies and interviewed one of the uh, an Amish guy, and it does um, not surprise me at all. I made a, a docu- mini documentary about it called "Who Turned the Lights Out," and what a I name. was I was like twenty, and it was probably not great and maybe borderline disrespectful, but like I, he, I asked him a bunch of stupid questions, but he was like, you know, the English, they call us the English. It's like the English, they get more and more technology to help them with their lives. And you would think that that would help them have more time for leisure. But all the technology does is speed you up. And all you do is just try to do more and move faster. And I was just like, holy cow, man, it's a really good wisdom. Such is that why twenty? So right. Is that what changed twenty-year-old you into you now? The stoic, philosophizing, you know, always reaching for meaning, guy. Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but that guy was that did it did stick with me. So perhaps, yeah, love that. It's good stuff. All right. Well, <clears throat> before we say something that's going to get us canceled, <laughs> let's uh, let's wrap this bad boy up. Yeah, that's a good one. I'll tell you what, for not doing a show in, I guess it's been like a month maybe, something like that. It's been a while. Um, it felt good to get back in the saddle. You know what I mean? That's, we, uh, it, good content. We got to iron out some know? details. We got to iron out some things. We got to get you a mic but uh, and some headphones. But um, Green screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You don't want those things in your ear, dude. No, no, I don't. I think if anything, for me personally, and the way I kind of like to be mobile and use my hands and everything, I wouldn't mind if I had some sort of standing set up in front of a green screen where I can be more myself and be a little bit more animated and active. That also that would be take away from the show. So. That would be amazing. It's kind of like a um, the uh, that punter that's really popular, ex punter that's really popular on ESPN that stands up during his show. Oh, oh, oh yeah, McAfee. Yeah, 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 that guy, Pat McAfee. Yeah, he stands up, like and it's great. It works. It. It's fantastic, and he's a very high energy guy. I don't know if I could ever compare myself to Pat McAfee, but yeah, that's exactly you, what you I'm dude, looking for. come on. You could you could be Pat McAfee, but here's what we need to do: you get a standing desk for one segment. You stand with a sleeveless shirt on, like him, and you go out. Just do the man. Just this is my McAfee bit, and I just rant about something. Just get completely uh-huh. lost in the sauce. I will get, I will go from thirty five thousand feet straight into the weeds like that and get completely mm. lost. All right, Alvin, great show. Let's cut it while we're ahead. I'm signing off. Fantastic. Sounds well good, done. Crap. Great good to one. be back. Everybody have a great weekend. Let's get it. What was that? We lost. Great show, Krabs. I'll see you next time. You're you're glitching, bro.